Hi everybody, welcome to the Off the Grid Revolution. Today uh, we're doing uh, a video on gardening and I wanted to show you some things that happened in the middle of September. Now all summer long I had a bed of potatoes here that I kept throwing leaves on. You can sort of see back where that black plastic is, that's the end of the potato bed. So everything from the fence over to uh, where the um, sweet potatoes are is all potatoes. And what we did is we pumped lots and lots of leaves, probably 500 bags of leaves, onto the garden. And what that does is it gives the potatoes a chance to grow in a soft environment where you can actually dig them up easily. Um, and this is an example of what I'm talking about. You just plant the potatoes in real soft dirt, and then uh, when you dig it up, look here, look at this. That's what I'm talking about. They grow up in really soft dirt. It's not hard to dig. It's so easy to get yourself nice potatoes. That's fascinating. Look, look at these. They were Aren't just they like beautiful? Laying, laying there waiting for me. They you. are laying there waiting for me. Um, if they, These are supposed to be a little smaller than that. They grew a little too big and they started to crack open. That's not a darn thing wrong with that. You can eat those. No, no problems whatsoever. No, no, no. And so just put them somewhere where you won't lose them like on some cardboard or something. That's how potatoes come out of the garden. Let me show you again what we're talking about. You plant them in rows, and then you just go through and you dig up the rows. See how easy this is to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Watch. You, and and it, there you go. Here's one. Beauty, eh? Now these are the ones. Yes. Look at this. Look at this down here. There's one. There's oh, one. wow. Okay, aren't this is like magic. It is. It is magic. <laughs> it's magic potatoes. Magic potato land. Um, and this is the richest soil you could possibly imagine. You know, I can it's tell been, by looking it's at it. It's been leaves. And look at this guy. A nice, beautiful, big worm. Now, when you harvest potatoes, when you find green ones, mm -hmm. set them aside for next year and let those be your, what's called seed potatoes. Okay. Because the green ones are not as good for you. Look at that. Another one popped out. And we have five different kinds of potatoes in the bed this year. And you know, again, I want to make the point that this is an urban garden. That's right. If you take a look, there's a few more. These are called uh, fingerlings. They're small and skinny. Um, yeah, this, you look down the way here, what you can see is that there's basically two city lots here. Mm -hmm. And we fenced them off so that we'd have access to... Uh, uh, the, the, the land without letting the critters in too easily um, and so we've, we've farmed all of this at one point or another this year now how would you how would you like conceptualize urban gardening as a part of the revolution by staying out there, of corporations we stay away from corporations um, with the exception of a half a dozen sweet potato plants not one thing in this garden was purchased by a corporation. The, uh, the plants we had, the tomato plants, which you'll get to see, the pepper plants you'll get to see, uh, were all from uh, donated plants from other people who were growing it from seeds from last year. Uh, and we, um, we don't uh, sell anything uh, to make money for ourselves in this garden. We sell money to, for um, the Community Bill of Rights. Uh, okay. We pick the fruit uh, and vegetables and we take it to uh, facilities that can use it when we get extras. Today we're going to pick some for some occupiers uh, and some other people to give away. And, and this is too. all organic? Right? It's absolutely all organic, yeah. And we'll show you some of that too. Um, we eat a lot of our weeds and this is one that we eat. You can't eat this one because it's gone to seed, but this is called lamb's quarter. Look for that weed in your garden. You got a good shot at that? Yes. I just Delicious and nutritious. Mmm. I love lamb's quarter, even when it's bitter. What's mm. it taste like? Okay. A little bit like spinach. Okay. Um, so that's that's potatoes. And we'll keep digging through here and looking for more potatoes. Look, there's a few more. Good grief. One scoop and I grab three. Mm -hmm. Four. Five. Little fingerlings. These are the most delicious potatoes you could possibly imagine. We wash those in water from the roof first. And then if we want to store them, we let them dry in the sun for a couple of hours. Now water from the roof, what do you mean oh, when you say that? Um, can you get a shot of the water barrels without getting the people on the porch, Joe? 
I think I got Just the barrels, not the people. Okay. Those are two 55-gallon drums that are um, coming off of the roof of the house. And that water is uh, used to water the garden and to wash the potatoes and other vegetables. Not good to drink, but boy, it's fertile water, which means it has good nutrients in it for the, for the plants. Mm -hmm. It has no chlorine, no fluoride, no leftover pro pro Prozac or Paxil uh, that you would have if you were using um, city, city water. Um, I want to show you another plant. Okay. Most of you have probably never seen this before. This is sweet potato. Underneath okay. all these mines, you will find I, it's too soon to dig them up, so I'm not going to risk losing some of my sweet potatoes. But mm -hmm. They grow across the, across the garden, and then you dig them up. Like there's the bottom of it right in there. Mm -hmm. Under there, if, if all of them were successful, will be five or six sweet potatoes of varying sizes. The smaller, the sweeter. And Wonderful. Sweet um, most of you who do garden, you probably know this plant. This is um, zucchini. Very young. Just coming out, growing really quickly, so the flower's still on it. Absolutely delicious. The smaller you eat a zucchini, the better it tastes. But if you get the big ones, you can still do something with them. You can make zucchini bread by shredding them, or you can cut them and you can bread them and deep uh, fry them and they're wonderful. We have them for breakfast all the time. You know, my grandmother used to do that. Yeah, big fried zucchinis. A lot of people don't want the big ones because they say they don't taste as good. All depends on how you prepare them. I remember so those breaded ones are delicious. They are delicious. This is the, uh, uh, another plant that's got some zucchinis or yellow squash. I'm not sure which one this is. I have a hard time telling them apart. Um, yeah, I can't tell. Anyway, here's another zucchini over here. You can take that one home, Joe. Okay. Um, what we have over here is a new crop. Uh, I call it new because we planted it about a month ago. These are Brussels sprouts. They can grow into December and January. Oh, wow. You have to look real carefully to see the Brussels sprouts. Between each joint, as a little nodule, mm -hmm. that's a Brussels sprout. Fantastic. Okay, and I'll be picking those probably um, late December. I'm, I'm thinking think we're it's... just like looking at Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner as we go through here, aren't we? <laughs> yes, we are. There'll be some of that too. Over there is the remnants of the strawberries. We let them grow all year. We let them stretch out and expand so we get more. They're growing the other side of the garden too. Back there is the black raspberries. You can see the, the rem remnants of those. Um, we'll have to trim those back. Over here, you can see we have uh, rows of tomatoes, rows of peppers. These yellow peppers are really delicious. They're as sweet as sweet can be. That looks wonderful. Mm. Oh man, <laughs> I'm taking that one home. Um, and then I want to real quickly take you to the back and show you. This is environmentally sound gardening. People, a lot of people give me grief about this. But this creates no contaminants for the garden. Environmentally at all. sound gardening. I'm not sure I got you when your back was. Uh, no, yeah, this is organic. This plastic stuff is organically sound gardening. Okay. Um, some people would not agree with that because they say uh, that it leaches into the uh, the ground. I found no evidence that says that, and they tell, and I've been told by the manufacturer and other people, it's good for organic gardening. And we don't have the official gardening seal of approval anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but we like it. We have um, purple kale down here, growing like crazy. Oh, yeah. We have um, cilantro growing here. You like cilantro, Jeff? I do. And uh, I want to get some kale mm. from you to put in smoothies, too. Okay, and for goodness sake, you have to take a bunch of the basil. Oh, that, yes, yes, yes. I yes. want to show you today. This is a row of basil. We had a, a guy who made us pesto because we grew the basil for him. Fantastic. And now he's coming back to get more for himself and uh, for others. Randy, we have 20 seconds left. Okay, thanks for coming to see the garden today. Bye, everybody.